Hey guys, Tech Armature, Wolf of Video for you guys. In today's video, we're going to show you how to optimize your iPhone performance and speed and then battery life as well. All of these tips that we're going to show you are going to help your iPhone, again, be optimized to its optimal performance so that it's performing like brand new. And from time to time, you want to do these steps that I like to do usually to refresh my iPhone's performance. That's why we're going to be optimizing our iPhone. So let's get started. So the very first thing when it comes to optimization is if you have tons of app, usually you open it up, you never close them out. So I usually like to start off by sliding up my finger here and closing out all the apps I ever had open. And over time, you'll see if you are using a lot of apps, there could be even the hundreds of apps open. Just slide it up and close all of them out. Now, after you have done that, the next thing you want to give your phone is a nice, clean, forced restart. So how do you do that? Well, forced restart is really simple. You're going to press and release the volume up, press and release the volume down one after another. Finally, hold the side button until the screen goes completely black and you see the Apple logo appear. And then at that time, you'll let go of that button and you'll be back to your iPhone. So we're going to do volume up, volume down, and then finally hold this button just like that. Now, if Siri does pop off for you, that means you did not press volume up and down quick enough. So make sure you press volume up followed by volume down really quick and then finally the side button as we're holding and until we see the Apple logo appear. Now this method will not delete any of your personal data. Your photos, videos, apps will be still on your phone. All this is doing is shutting down the software of the phone completely and then reloading the code. So if there is any sort of software related issue with your iPhone, it will resolve 99% of the problem that most iPhone user experience along with the software of the phone. Now, after you have done that, the next thing to do is to check if there's updates for your apps over time. Apps are constantly being updated and you want to ensure that your phone is running the latest version of all the apps it has downloaded. In order to do that, you go over to the app store here, click on your profile and here under your accounts here, you'll see here update. You can individually update of them, but I usually like to click on update all and it'll tell you the number of apps that needs to be updated and the reason why you do that is as you can see here there's bug fixes performance problems and all sorts of issue with all these apps that each app developer releases so it's best to ensure that all the apps are up to date so they perform like they should on the version of the iOS that you are running and you want to do this time to time if you don't have automatic update but if you do that's great but if you're not always go ahead and ensure that you're apps are up to date. Now after you have done that it's also time to check if there's an update for your iPhone as well. So if you go into your settings, general software update, look to check if there's an update. If you're not automatically doing the update itself you can come here to manually update your phone and same exact thing is that when you're running a software they're constantly being fixed for any bug fixes, performance issue and all sorts of issues that Apple discovers with the software and they release new fixes. So go ahead and do the update itself. I do recommend if you are doing the app update, ensure that the app update is complete before you do the software update. And during the software update, you should give yourself at least half an hour to 45 minutes. Make sure your phone is at least 50% or more charged and connected to the internet and or your cellular data so that it can actually download the update and install the update as well. Now, after you have done that, it's time to see if you can actually clean up some space and storage on your device here. And the reason why I say that is if you go into your settings of your iPhone, go to general, and then iPhone storage, over time you have this tons of issues going on with the storage that you have on your iPhone by messages, by photos, videos, apps that you download and never use. You want to go ahead and review the recommendation that Apple recommends on the software and enable them so that they can work like they should in a way to remove apps that aren't needed, delete photos or videos that are larger size that you don't need or if you have duplicates, things like that. And it's a good way to kind of do a cleaning of the storage and the less storage that you're using up on your phone, the more smoothly your phone will be able to load up things because there's less in the memory and the cache that it's storing. So one thing to kind of review is what you can delete. If you can, for example, if you can delete things like garage app, right, you click on delete apps and it will be removed. Same with the photos and videos. You can go over to the photos and videos apps as well and then individually delete them as well. 
and you'll notice an improvement in your performance of your iPhone. Now, after you have uh, done that, you also want to check out the Files app here. So Files app is a great app. And if you do download a lot of file content, review what you have, see if you can delete some stuff. For example, if you need to delete some files or organize them as you should, just like that, you'll see improvement of your phone's performance as well. Now, the next thing you want to check out on your iPhone in your settings here is this time under the settings, under general, where you have background app refresh. This is a common one that most of the time it's on by Wi-Fi or cellular data. What that means is if you have the setting on where you're seeing all these apps are turned on, they're constantly refreshing their data on your Wi-Fi or cellular in the background. And what happens is they're constantly pooling data and so that it's available right away when you open the app. But even when you open the app and refresh, it's getting the same data. So as you can see here, if you do turn these apps, it may help preserve your battery life. That's the key there is that because they're also running in the background, they're using a power and the performance of your phone. So generally, if you don't need it, you can go ahead and turn it off individually for each of the app. Or if you just want to turn them off, all of them, which I recommend, is doing that but there are sometimes in a case that app needs to keep on running in the background if that's the case you want to turn either for cellular data and then turn everything off and keep that app as well but generally I like to turn it off to get the best performance for my iPhone and battery life as well now the next thing you want to do in terms of reviewing or optimizing your iPhone is by going into your settings this time, a common thing to check out is under privacy and security setting and then location services. So if you have location services on, you want to go ahead and review apps that are using your location on your iPhone. The reason why you say that is that, again, over time, if you have apps that are using your location, they're constantly pulling data from your GPS sensors, which need to be activated. And the more apps that you're requiring GPS can again, consume up a lot of power and the compute power on your iPhone. So what you'll do is go ahead and click on each app. The apps that don't completely need it, you'll turn off to never. And the apps that do need it, usually you can use the app while using the app feature or ask next time these two, again, for the apps that need it. But generally, never is the best option for apps that don't need it. And a lot of apps usually don't require the location services. So go ahead and review that list on your iPhone. Now, the next thing you want to also check out in your settings here is your notification for apps. So each time you download an app, they're constantly asking you to allow notification, which is great, and you want notification, but there's apps that you might not really care the notifications for, and they create a lot of noise or a lot of just random distraction, and again, also hindering the performance of your iPhone. So go ahead and review that list, and if you don't want a notification for an app, just simply toggle that off, and then you will not get any notification from that app. Again, making less of a distraction and less of a clutter on your iPhone in terms of getting notification itself. And you can go ahead and review all the apps that you do want notification you can allow or not allow, but not turning that off is probably the best in my opinion. And finally, when it comes to optimizing your phone is that ensuring that up top here, your battery percentage is between 20 to 80 percent if your battery's lower than 20 percent go ahead and charge it and you don't want it over 80 percent as well to keep the battery health as healthy as possible if you go into your settings battery and then battery health and charging this is how you maintain 100 percent battery life is keeping your charge between 80 to 100 percent and under charging optimization keep it on optimized battery charging and you do not want the none option 80 percent limit is also good but again none will again age your battery a lot quicker and hinder the performance of your iphone so that's all the tips we have in terms of optimizing your iphone i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful if so please make a like and subscribe button thanks for watching guys and follow for more tips and tricks on your iphone see you guys next time